In this video, I'm going to talk about the Olympus Focus Bracketing feature while also providing some tips and tricks to improve your techniques and also the right settings to have. There are two stacking modes, one called Focus Stacking and the other one being Focus Bracketing. In this video, I am just going to cover bracketing. Focus bracketing is a form of focus stacking, but instead of the traditional method where you take a shot and move your camera forward with each shot, your camera in bracketing mode will do most of the work for you without you having to move your camera at all. If you are like me and you do a lot of focus stacking, having a camera with bracketing will make stacking much easier. All you have to do is try and keep your camera as stabilized as possible while you are taking the photos which is easier said than done sometimes, but hopefully this video will help with your techniques. To find your bracketing settings, start by hitting your menu button, and after that, go down to shooting menu two, and go over to bracketing, turn it on, then go down to focus bracketing, and there will be four more settings. Focus stacking, Make sure this is turned off because bracketing won't work with it on. The max number of shots you can set is 999. I just have mine set to 99 because I don't ever plan on doing a focus stack of 100 or more images. A very important setting is the focus differential. The focus differential is the distance between in focus areas in the shot. The smaller the number, the smaller the gap there will be between each shot, which also means setting your differential to a smaller number will result in much more shots. For close-up stacks, since your depth of field is very shallow at this point, I recommend setting your differential between two and four. This differential range will cover every area of your subject as long as you have your camera stabilized good enough. If you are taking a full body stack of a larger bug, you can probably get away with setting your differential to five and six. The charge time determines the loading time between the individual photos in the series. The optimal delay time depends on the flash model, batteries used, and the flash power setting. The less energy the flash needs, the faster it can fire again, and the shorter we can choose the time delay. So if you are using a flash, shooting at the right flash power is crucial. You want to be on the lower end power wise so your flash can keep up with the continuous photos that are being taken during the stack. I always keep my flash power at 132nd power for bracketing and I feel like this is the perfect starting point. My recommended power ranges are between 1 128th and 1 16th power. Going through the menu is the only way to turn bracketing on or off, and sometimes going through all that can be a hassle when you are in the middle trying to photograph something. So instead of having to go through that, I recommend changing your button layout in your settings. Hit menu button, then go down to the custom menu, scroll down to B, and hit button function, and here you can change the function of any button on your camera. I changed the function of my exposure compensation button to bracketing, so with just a click of this button, I could turn bracketing mode on and off, which makes it much easier rather than having to go through all the menus. Another thing to consider is not every lens is compatible with the Olympus focus bracketing feature. I'll have a list on the screen of every lens that is compatible with the feature and also every Olympus camera that has focus bracketing along with a few camera flashes that I recommend.
the first thing you will notice if you are using a flash is the max shutter speed you will have is 1 50th of a second. But even at speeds that slow, the images will still come out sharp, especially if you are using an OMD camera. And that is because these cameras have five axis image stabilization, which will help stabilize the shot and also stabilize the preview either through your LCD screen or viewfinder. It works great and will help tremendously if you like shooting handheld. For my shutter speed, I will usually keep it at 150th, but if it is underexposed or I'm trying to get some color in the background, I will slow it down as slow as 120th of a second if I need to. So for shutter speed, I recommend having it between 120th of a second and 150th. For your aperture, I recommend keeping it in the middle because this is where your lens is the sharpest at, so between f5 and f11. For ISO, I recommend just keeping it at 200. This is the setting that I changed the least. About 95% of my shots are taken at ISO 200. Once you are ready to start bracketing, just hit the shutter button once and your camera will begin the focus bracket. You don't have to hold the button the whole duration of the stack. And if you want to stop it, just hit the shutter button again. If you are new to this feature or focus stacking in general, I do recommend to start off by taking photos of inanimate objects you find around your house or plants before moving on to live subjects, just so you can see how it works. But once you are ready to move on to live subjects for the first time, the best time to go out would be the early mornings. And this is because this is the time period when most bugs are at rest, which will make shooting focus brackets much easier. I always recommend taking focus stacks in manual mode so your camera isn't hunting for focus and to also start your stacks at the front of your subjects. Like in this example here, I focused on the hairs that were slightly in front of its eyes, and once you start the stack, your camera will do the rest. All you have to do is keep your camera as stable as possible, which is easier said than done sometimes, but hopefully these next few tips will help with that. The most important part when it comes to taking some good quality stacks is stabilizing your camera and your subject. I'm usually anti-tripod when it comes to macro photography, but for focus bracketing, a tripod or a monopod can be very helpful, especially since you don't have to move your camera at all during the photo taking. If you prefer to shoot handheld like I do, then it will be a lot harder and it will probably require a lot of practice for most to finally get good at, but it's not impossible to achieve handheld stacks. It's all about your techniques and how you stabilize your camera. In this example here, there was a plant hopper resting on a kudzu vine. And for situations like this, I will gently grab what the subject is on. And in this case, it was the vine it was on I do this to keep what I'm trying to photograph as still as possible because the slightest winds can throw everything off. Once I grab the vine, I will then rest the front of my lens on the opposite hand and I do this so my camera doesn't move during the bracket and then I begin taking photos. In situations like this, I will sometimes even hold my breath during the stack because sometimes breathing will throw off the stack alignment. And this is the technique that I use for the majority of my focus stacks. This next example is another technique I use when I am focus bracketing. I'll start by getting on one knee, then I'll rest my elbow on my leg and gently grab what the subject is on, and then I'll rest the front of the lens on the opposite hand just like the last example, and then I'll begin shooting.
This example is similar to the last one, but this time the subject I was trying to photograph was in a tough spot and was also positioned in a weird angle. All I can really do in situations like this is to try and hold my camera as still as possible without any support, which is very difficult sometimes. So in situations like this, I do recommend using a tripod, especially if you aren't used to doing handheld stacks. A few things to keep in mind when you are stacking is the subject you are photographing has to be completely still for the stacked image to come out good. If your subject moved during the stack, that movement will show up in the final image and you will sometimes get crazy results like these. But as long as the movements aren't too drastic, then those artifacts can be corrected in software such as Photoshop. Another thing to keep in mind is the alignment of your photos doesn't have to be perfect either. As long as you didn't move your camera too drastically and your subject didn't move much, then you should be fine. And as far as the best software for focus stacking, I can't say with 100% certainty on what's the best because I've only ever used Photoshop. But I know the three most popular are Helicon Focus, Zareen Stacker, and Photoshop. Zareen and Helicon I know are probably a lot better than Photoshop for stacking, so I would go with one of those. If anyone has any experience with either software, let me know down in the comments below which one is the best one for focus stacking. Overall, having a camera with a focus bracketing system will make focus stacking a lot easier. So if you like to do a lot of stacking like I do, then I highly recommend one. But the reality is, even with a bracketing system, there will still be a lot of trial and error before you finally start to figure it out. And also, just expect more failed stack attempts than good ones because it's hard sometimes and every photo situation is different. So don't get too discouraged over the failed attempts because it's all a part of the process. And I understand how frustrating it can be sometimes because I still find myself getting frustrated nowadays when things aren't going my way. But just keep practicing and most importantly, figure out what works best for you. Just because something works for me doesn't necessarily mean it will work best for you too. So just keep practicing and figure out what techniques and methods work best for you. I hope this video was helpful for you. And if you have any questions or anything, then let me know down in the comments. I'll gladly try and help.